One point that is neglected, unfortunately, is hand wrapping. Oftentimes, people hurt their hands when they're striking the bag, when they're striking an opponent. And the reason that they hurt their hands is because the tape wasn't used properly. The hand wrap wasn't used properly and the tape wasn't used properly. I'd like to demonstrate this for you. What I've done was I've sewn two hand wraps together. I discovered that one length was not long enough, so I got my wife to sew two together. Okay, now I'll show you the proper way to put your hand wrap on. Okay, start on top of your hand, go towards the wrist, okay? A couple of times around the wrist. Now at this point you're going down towards your hand, all right? Go around inside, come back on top and crisscross. Now you're coming back on top of your thumb. You want to cover the thumb also. Okay, go around the thumb and back up. Make sure that everything is secure, okay? Take 10-15 minutes to tape your hands. It's not important, it's the way that you do it. Okay, now you're coming around the wrist, you're going towards your small finger, in between your small finger and the next one, all right? Go underneath, around the palm. Now you're going to go in between your index and the middle finger, okay? From here, go around the wrist, go on top of the wrist, I should say. Inside the palm, you're going to come over and crisscross it again. And from here, come around and get the last space in between the two middle fingers. Now from here, come over and you're going to cover this by using your hand wrap a couple of times over your knuckles. Make sure that you secure everything. When you're doing this, you also want your hands, your hand to be spread out, okay? You don't want anything too tight. Should have mentioned that a little bit earlier, but next time you do it, make sure that your hand is spread out so that you don't get your hand wrapped too tight. Now you're gonna finish around the wrist. A couple more times around the wrist. That's basically how to wrap your hands. From there, the hand wrap is not enough. You have to secure everything with some tape. Now make sure that the, you don't use two and a half pounds of tape, okay? There's regulations on how much tape you can use. If you don't know, ask your PKA representative in your state or even in your school and he'll tell you the proper ruling on this, okay? You wanna wrap your wrist, go towards the hand inside across the palm. You wanna crisscross over. You're gonna do the same thing again. Now, when you're coming back, you don't wanna put any tape on your knuckle because you're not allowed to do this. You're going to put some tape just above your knuckle. Your knuckle's right here. You put some tape just on top of the knuckle. You're gonna go back towards the wrist, break your tape off. Now, this is not over now. You wanna secure your thumb also. Break a piece of tape off. Point your hand downwards. You're gonna start from the base of your thumb, wrap it around, and crisscross it on the other side. Okay, from here you use another piece of tape to secure it, secure that piece. Okay, we call that an anchor, an anchor tape. From there, wrap it a couple of times. That's basically how to use a hand wrap. Remember, when you're doing, when you're gonna go hit on a bag, this is not sufficient. You need some bag gloves. So secure your hands properly, then use some bag gloves. There's additional padding to it. Now that you've taped your hands properly, you're ready to punch. This is what I would like to show you now, basic punches. If you have basic boxing skills, this is a plus for full contact karate. Before you get into your working out, your shadow boxing, your combination punches, whatever, make sure to loosen up your shoulders. This is your launching pad, all right? It's like a rocket. If you don't loosen it up and prepare it well, your punch is gonna slow down. You won't have as much power into it. Loosen it up, spend 15 minutes if you want. If you have to, loosen up your shoulders. From there, you'll be ready to punch. You'll be ready to explode. 
first punch I would like to cover is the jab. Before I show you how to do it properly, I, there's purposes of using a jab. Number one purpose is obviously to hit your opponent. Number two purpose is to keep your opponent away from you. When he's rushing at you, throw a couple of jabs on his nose, he'll think twice about rushing at you blindly. A third reason is to discover the distance between you and your opponent. Okay, I'll explain that later. And another reason is to set up your opponent. When you hit him with a good jab, momentarily, just for a fraction of a second, he's going to lo lose his balance. That's when you take advantage and throw the powerful punch. Okay? I'm going to show you how to throw the jab properly. Before you, throw, before you start throwing your punches, secure your stance. Evaluate your stance. Make sure that it's right, that the distance is proper in between your feet. You're facing your opponent sideways. The heel is raised. Your, your weight is distributed evenly. Your elbows are on your body, your hands at your chin level, you're ready to punch. Now from here, you don't want to telegraph your punch. You don't want to tell your opponent that you're coming with the jab, okay? One common mistake that people use, that people do when they're using a jab is they lift the elbow first, and then they throw out the jab. Well, there's two reasons why you don't want to do this. First of all, an experienced fighter's going to see movement, he's going to, see, he's going to react with his hand. All right? Another reason why you don't want to do this, when the elbow comes up, you notice that the hand is coming in a circle. You don't want to go in a circle. You want to go straight at your opponent. All right? From here, make sure that the elbow stays down. Keep the hands in front of your face. Protect your face. You're going to straighten out your arm now. Probably that you're, most likely your opponent is not going to see your punch until it's halfway there, okay? Because the, the optic illusion that he's getting, okay? You're going to disturb that optic illusion by bringing up the elbow. You don't want to do that. So keep the elbow down, straighten it out. Three quarters of the way there, make sure that turn so that the palm faces the floor, all right? This is going to make a reaction in your shoulder, right? When your palm is going to go face down, your shoulder's going to come up. You might be able to see it a little bit more on this angle here. Notice that when I'm shooting, my palm is going down. Look at what my shoulders are doing. It's coming up to protect my face. At this point, my face is protected. My body's protected. At this point, my body's not protected. My face theoretically shouldn't be protected, but there's a way of doing it so that you can protect yourself. Turn the palm inside, get the shoulder to react and come up. Tuck your shoulder into your chin, like this here, okay? From this angle, again, this, this arm is punching. Keep the other arm there for protection all the time. There's one going out, the other one has to stay there to protect, okay? Once you've thrown that jab, bring it straight back, okay? From this angle here, shoot it out. Bring it straight back. You don't want to drop it and have to come back up again. Straight out, straight back in. Get back into this defensive position. Now from here, there's a little tip I'd like to, uh, I'd like to tell you about a jab, all right? When you're throwing your jab, so that you protect your face, all right? Remember when you're throwing a punch or a kick or what have you, you're leaving a hole. You're presenting a hole for your opponent as a counterpunch. Okay. When you're throwing a jab, I want you to line up your nose with your front knuckle. I'll explain to you why. If I was to throw a jab, and I'm looking at the corner, out of the corner of my eye, my nose is pointing over there, my knuckle is here, look at the space here. Okay, this is a vulnerable spot for counterpoints. The other side is protected, fine and down. If this side is not, what you want to do, line up the nose, the front knuckle, you saw that that space here to disappear. All right, don't leave yourself open for a counter punch. Bring it out, bring it back, line yourself up, make sure that your stance is proper. What a jab looks like at normal speed, okay? Slow it down at a normal speed. Make sure that you distribute your weight evenly. You don't want to go forward on it. From here, bang, bring it back. Bang, bring it back. Very easy punch to do. I like to cover 
The same punch going to the body now. The same technique applies except, okay, that you're going to use your, the lower part of your body a little bit more. When you're throwing punches to the body, you never, never throw it going downwards. What you want to do from here, like I said, keep the body nice and straight. Look at your opponent. Bend the knees. Your body's straight, nice and straight. You can throw the jab. You're protected. Your body's protected. Your chin is protected. From there, get back into it. What you want to do, if you want to add a little bit more power into it, you'll use what we call a step-in jab. At the same time as you're making contact, same time your arm is going up, your leg is going up. Remember what we talked about the footwork earlier on. You're going to go forward with the forward foot. You're going to step down on the foot and extend the jab to the body, like so. And bring it back. Very easy punch to do. It looks easy. It is easy. I'm sure you can do it. Now I'd like to show you the jab with an opponent. Remember, when you're starting, set yourself right. Make sure that your stance is right. Okay, distribute your weight evenly from here. The elbows come up. Okay, keep the elbow down. Straighten out your jab. Make sure that you're lining in the, the nose on the first knuckle when you're hitting your opponent. Bring it back, all right? Remember the thing I, I told you about the elbow. If I was to bring the elbow up, Look what my hand does. It comes around, this guy's blocking it because he's got a good stance, good defensive position. Keep the elbow down, explode, bring it back. The same thing applies to the body. When you go to the body, bend at the knees, do your step in, okay? Do the same thing, the exact same thing. From here, step down and forward and step back, all right? Bang, bang, bang. To the face, to the body. This way, you're in a good defensive position. The next punch I would like to talk about is the right cross. Earlier I said about the jab, you were setting your opponent up for a powerful punch. Well, this is it, the powerful punch, a knockout punch. Contrary to the jab, this punch the whole body is involved in it. You start it from the floor, you pick it up through your hip, your body, your shoulder, extend it, and hopefully hit your opponent. Set yourself up properly, make sure that your stance is right from here. Bring up the elbow, the, bring up the hands to cover your face. Now, your punch, like I said, is going to start from the floor. You're going to pivot. Okay, remember that your, that your rear heel is raised off the floor. If it's not, your foot is going to stick. You won't be able to turn. Raise the heel off the floor. From here, start your pivot. Okay, you notice that my leg is going to turn. I want you to make an effort to turn your hips. Okay, there's a lot of power in your hips. You have to use it. The whole body is involved in this punch. If you don't use it, you're going to tire out faster. All right. From here, pivot. Make sure that the hips come into play. Okay, I want you to make an effort with the hips. Turn the, the, your waist, okay, and the shoulders is going to determine the distance between uh, whether it's a long punch or a short punch, okay? If you finish your punch here, well, obviously, the punch is shorter, but also your power is all stuck into your shoulder, all right? You want to follow through. Now, remember when you're doing this, you're turning, okay, from this angle, you might be able to see a little bit more. You're turning rather than going forward. You don't want to commit yourself and fall forward. You want to turn into your position or turn into your punch. From here, another important part is that you're in the, in the position to follow with another punch. Okay, if I was to go, if I was to follow through, so uh, theoretically, uh, I'm working on one leg. I don't have any weight on the rear leg. Okay, you want to distribute your weight evenly. Remember, we're doing kicks here. Okay, kicks and punches. If I was to go like this and fall off balance, I can't kick with the forward leg, but if I keep my weight distributed properly, I can lift the leg up as easily as I want to. Okay? Make sure the same thing applies. That little trick I told you about the jab, the same thing applies. The nose and the first knuckle. From here, line it up. Make sure that the guard is right on the other side. When you're throwing the punch to the body, again, don't stand up straight and go to the body. You remember? Look what it looks like. Okay? I'm exposed now. Okay? Work with the lower part of your body. From here, drop the weight, straighten out, or your body is straight, 
Should your, your right cross step back and bring it back into position. If you do this, if you do every punch properly, you're always setting yourself up for a nice continuous motion. You'll be able to follow up very easily. If you throw something off balance, if you throw yourself off balance, if you throw your punch off balance, you can't follow up, and that might cost you valuable points. I'd like to demonstrate the same punch, that right cross, with an opponent. From here again, don't forget, set yourself up properly. Every time you want to throw a punch, if your feet aren't properly set, you're using your upper body, and that's no good. You use the whole part, the whole body. Start from the rear. Again, this is a summation of movements. You're going to turn, start from the rear, or start from the foot. Make sure that the foot turns, the hips get into play, your shoulders are going to turn, you land your punch on your opponent. Make sure that you line up the nose and the front knuckle, that you're looking at your opponent. From here, you notice that I'm not throwing my body forward, but rather I'm pivoting. Very important, you don't want to throw yourself off balance. Extend, make sure that the, uh, show, the, the chin is protected on both sides, on this side and on the other side. You want to throw the same, when you want to throw the punch to the body, the same thing applies. Drop your weight, shoot the same punch. You're going to start from the rear, turn your hips, your waist, your shoulders are going to determine the distance and the power. From here, drop your weight, turn, explode into the body, bring back, bring it back. I've demonstrated the right cross in slow motion so that you can understand how it's done. I'll throw it with a little bit more power, a little bit more speed. Set yourself up, look at your opponent. Bring it back, make sure that you throw it fast, but you have to bring it back as fast as possible. Again, here, as we do to the face. Same thing to the body. Step forward a little bit, throw it to the body. The jab and the right cross are punches for long distance from away, away from your opponent. The punches I'm going to show you now, the hook and the upper guard are medium distance and close in fighting. First punch I'm going to show you is called a hook punch. Now, again, before you throw your punch, make sure that your feet are properly set. Okay, I'm going to repeat this all along. I want you to make sure that your feet are properly set. From here, the elbows are covering the body, the hands are covering the face. You pivot contrary to the right cross, which is your pivot, which is done on the rear foot, and the whole body is into this punch. The hook, you're pivoting on the forward foot. The body, the whole body again is involved in this punch. If you don't throw your body into it, your hips and your shoulders and everything, you don't have a punch. But the most important part about this punch is that the pivot is done on the forward foot. I'll demonstrate. From here, keep the elbows in, the hands high. You're gonna start, it's an explosion. Very short punch, it's an explosion. From here, you have to bring up the elbow. So if you're gonna strike like this, it's the same thing as doing wrist wrestling. You don't wanna do this, you wanna strike. Bring up the elbow. Now this is a summation of movements. I'm gonna break it down so that you can understand. But when it comes time to throwing the punch, I don't want you to go one, two, three. You have to do it all in one movement, explode into this movement. From here, the elbow is going to come up so that the forearm is, f is uh, parallel with the floor. Your fist, you can either have it this way here or the palm of the hand facing down. This is a matter of preference. I prefer to do it this way because I have a, uh, my whole fist finesse in this, in this fashion here. Now, bring up the elbow from here, start your pivot on the forward foot, explode with your hips, and turn. Remember that the angle of your arm is not out like this, and it's not close to your body like this either, because you're going to strike with the elbow. The angle of the arm is this one here. You're striking, and you're exploding. From here, you're looking at your opponent, keep the other hand there for protection. Again slow motion, bring up the arm, at the same time pivot on the forward leg, explode with the hips, and back into your stance. You notice that from here, 
my body is in a position to follow with the right hand. Something I mentioned about the punches earlier. If you do punches properly, you're setting yourself up for a follow-up. If you don't do it, if you throw yourself out of bounds with one punch, everything else is not going to follow. As simple as that. Again, from here, make sure that the elbows are down, the weight is distributed, bring up the elbow so that the arm is parallel, pivot the forward foot with the hips. You don't want to follow through, you don't go around, you want to keep the arms or your eyes on your opponent all the time. From here, and strike. You notice that the, it doesn't travel very far, but because my weight is behind this punch, there's, very, there's a hell of a lot of power in this. Now, when you want to go to the body with the same punch, again, bring that, bend the knees, explode, and back up. Now, these punches are easy to put together, one behind the other. Strike to the body, stand up, strike to the head. Okay, from another angle, from here, the elbows are up. Make sure that you pivot on the forward leg, explode with the hips. From here, bring up the elbow, turn. Look at your opponent all the time, and back down. Turn, and back down. From here, this is a little bit slow down so that you can understand how the punch is done. Throw a little bit more power, a little bit more speed. Again, remember this is an explosion. Every punch you throw is an explosion. And down. Back down. And down. Okay? To the body. Now I'll do the same punch with an opponent. Remember what I told you about the distances. If I'm far away from my opponent, I'm not going to try and hook him from here. I'm too far. I'm going to have to step up, close the distance between me and my opponent, throw the hook at the same time. From here, again, set yourself up. Keep your eyes on your opponent all the time. Keep your hands ready. You're very, very alert at this point. Step up. Now, this has to be done very fast. Step up and hook at the same time. You notice that I stepped up. My pivot was done on my forward foot, my hips came into play, there's a lot of power in the hips, all right? A lot of energy from there, pivot, hit your opponent. From there, you can follow very easily with another punch. Same thing for the body, same thing applied. Go forward, bang, now I, from here, I wanna come back, or I can come back and follow very easily with a second hook. To the body, to the face, and that in this position here, he's all set up for a follow-up right hand, right cross, the punch was we covered earlier. Very, very easy punch, but remember it's a close-in punch. From here we're going to go to another close-in punch, short distance punch. It's called the uppercut. Remember, set yourself up, <clears throat> bring up the elbows, the hands properly. Now from here, like I said, it's a close-in punch, so you have to close the distance between you and your opponent. The way that you're going to do that, obviously, when you're going forward, the forward leg is going to go forward, okay? Front leg is going to go forward. In this position, you're going to throw the uppercut. Now, when you're doing this, okay, you notice that you're coming down a little bit, okay? This is important, because to go up, you obviously have to be crouched down a little bit. From here, go forward, at the same time you're going down a little bit. Now, what you want to do in this position here is straighten out your, straighten out your legs and use the same mechanics as when you're doing your right hand. Okay, I'll explain. From here, the right hand is done this way. The right uppercut is done the same way. So if you're going to straighten out your, arm, your legs to come from underneath and hit your opponent on the jaw. Here, straighten out your legs, come around, come underneath, in between the, the hands, you're going to finish right at your shoulder, right in front of your left shoulder. Okay, we'll do it again. Step forward, use the same mechanics, which is to pivot on the rear foot, turn your hips, turn your shoulders, straighten out your legs. Finish in front of your shoulder, and your opposite shoulder. The reason why I want you to finish in front of your shoulder, your opposite shoulder, that is. If you are going to throw the uppercut right here, your power is all stuck into your shoulder. 
You want to unfold that power, unleash that power by turning your shoulders. Make sure that you finish your punch in front of your left sh opposite shoulder. Again, step up, straighten out your legs, and go right under and hit your opponent on the chin. Finish your, po your punch in front of your left shoulder. You can do the same punch going to the body. You can use it as a counter punch or as an attack. From here again, step up, straighten out your punch into the body. Back into your stance. Step up, straighten it out into the body, back in the position, a defensive position. Now from here, you notice that I'm in a position to follow with a hook, and from here you notice I'm the, that I'm in a position to follow with the right hand, and so on and so forth. So if you position, if you throw the punch properly, correctly, you're positioning yourself all the time to throw a follow-up punch. I'll show you the uppercut from another angle. From here, step up, turn from the rear foot, straighten out your legs, finish in front of your left shoulder. Very easy punch to do. There's time, and there's a, there's a time and a place for every punch. It's a matter of choosing the right punch. Same punch you apply to the body. Step up, throw the punch to the body. Again, keep the elbows close to the body, to your body all the time. Step up, throw it, come back. To the face, to the body. A little bit faster now so that you know how right up cut is thrown. From here. Make sure to bring back your hand in your defensive position. This guy's reacting to these punches. If you leave your punch out, he's gonna slap you right in the face. To the face, to the body. Now, like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, there's a proper time and a proper place to throw your punches. I'll show you a couple of basic combinations, and the rest is left up to your imagination. I'll show you the right uppercut with an opponent. Set yourself up properly. Close the distance between you and your opponent. At the same time, bringing yourself down a little bit. Now you're going to straighten out. You're going to explode front, uh, going up, and you're going to pivot at the same time. This is a very powerful punch. From here, connect your opponent on, under the chin. You notice that if I, if I hit him, this is a very powerful punch. If I hit him with it, I can follow up very easily with a hook punch from there, right, a right cross. It's a very powerful punch. It's a little bit tricky to do. Once you've done it and you've practiced it, you'll be able to apply it in your fighting. Same punch to the body. <coughs> Step up, close the distance, shoot it, bring it back. And back to the face. And back. I just showed you the basic punches, the jab, the cross, the hook, and the uppercut. Two punches that are meant for distant, long distance, two punches that are meant for close distance. In my opinion, this is sufficient, this is enough. You don't need to do all sorts of fancy spinning whoop de doo triple kick. They're not necessary. If you stick with the basics and you work on them, you'll develop speed with one and power with the other, and vice versa and you'll be able to win fights that way. This is the priority in your career is to win fights. I'm going to show you a couple of basic combinations. I don't want to stand here and show you 25 different combinations because I believe that combinations are a part of an individual, but I'll show you basic combinations and you'll understand from there the possibilities of putting punches together. <clears throat> First of all, I want to do is a Jab cross combination, a, a two punch combination. I set my op opponent up and I knock him out, hopefully. <coughs> I'm there. <coughs> now, when I'm in closer, I want to do an uppercut, a right uppercut, expose his head for a left hook. Set him up, knock him out. From here, <coughs> I'm going to do a three punch combination. Set him up, set him up again, or stun him. Knock him out, three punch combination. 
jab, cross, hook. <coughs> you can easily add a fourth punch to that, follow up with a right cross or a right uppercut. <coughs> Those are basic combinations. I don't need to show you anymore. I want you to develop some punches and some imagine of your imagination and individuality. This is up to you. Now that I've done a little bit of shadow boxing, I'd like to show you the power, the balance, everything put together uh, on focus gloves. Focus gloves is very close to hitting an opponent. The same size, the same surface, uh, the mobility, uh, everything comes to a head when you're using the focus gloves. And it's very important that you have somebody confident to you uh, holding these so that you get your maximum workout out of this. And it's also important that you can work in a ring and get used to working in the ring. Get used to the corners and the ropes and the center part and everything else. I'm just going to show a couple of basic combinations and uh, you'll see what it is to, to hit on a focus glove. Okay, make sure that you set yourself right. Two punch combination, three punch. Four punch combination. Now, these are punches that are done, obviously, at a longer distance. We'll shorten up the distance and work inside. Step up, make sure that when you're working inside, close the distance between you and your opponent. From there, explode. Miss. how you do um, focus mitts. Remember this is to develop speed, it's to develop accuracy, and it's also going to help your balance. One piece of equipment that I like to use in the ring, and I do use in the ring, is the focus mitts. The importance of focus mitts is to develop your accuracy, develop your stance, your balance, and combination. When you're doing this, you need a competent person to hold your focus mitts. What you want to do, put your back gloves on, get ready to strike, uh, wrap your hands properly, put your back gloves on. Your opponent, your, your coach is going to hold the mitt. When he wants you to throw punches, he's going to pop a combination that he wants you to throw. For example, if he wanted me to throw a right uppercut and a left foot, followed by a left foot. This is what he's going to ask for by popping the hands up in those positions. I have to react as fast as possible because when you're fighting, those opportunities are going to come quick and if you don't take advantage of them, when they happen, you're going to miss them. Okay, remember one thing when you're doing this, practice your footwork, you can, all, you can do it. When you're on the attack, you can also do it when you're on defense. We'll start with the attack and show you how it's done.
basically how you want to do it. Remember, there's the outside part of the ring, there's the inside part of the ring. Make sure to practice both, because those are the situations that will be happening in an actual fight. This piece of equipment is called the crazy ball, or the double end ball. The purpose of its use is to get accuracy and speed in your punches. It's not a strengthening, strengthening piece of equipment like the heavy bag is. It's a very mobile one. You can practice your slipping, you can pra practice your counter punching, you can practice also your combinations. A very mobile thing, you also have to be mobile. Set yourself up, back away, shoot punches at it, relax. The heavy bag is used mainly to develop some strength in your punches, strength into your kicks. The way that you want to use the heavy bag, instead of standing, standing in front and just hitting at it, make it a little bit harder on yourself. Push it out, when it's going away from you, that's when you want to attack it. The same thing with an opponent. He's not always going to be coming at you, you sometimes have to go after him. Make sure to push him out, afterwards you can start Going after him, get the heavy bag, hard as you can. From the motion picture Rocky, you can hear the theme behind this being played of Rocky, John. It seems to be a, a normal event now. When you have a main event, you play the theme from Rocky. That's right, and especially in this case, I guess, with the sport growing along like Rocky did, and also those kickboxers growing along all the way, and having a, a local and a guy from Ottawa, a Canadian, who's going to try for the world title. I think the uh, theme was a little bit good in the selection of it. OK, describe to our viewers the boxers, the kickboxers, starting off with, in the red corner, Doug Ware. Doug Ware, 6'3", 166 pounds. Golden Gloves champion from New England in past history. 6-0 in kickboxing. Uh, a very good puncher and a very good kicker. I, I was told, I've never seen him fight, Chinese Stadio record, 14 wins, two losses. Canadian middleweight champion, number two contender in the world, 5'11", 168 pounds. Known for power in both hands and power in both legs. A really powerful fighter. A slow starter at times, or most of the time he wants to feel things out. Shaiv is a 12-rounder fighter, so on a seven round, he's got to open up a bit quicker. So this Doug Ware has uh, the advantage in reach. He's got the advantage in height. His hands should be better from his boxing experience, but the story is going to unfold very soon, Ron. Doug Ware is the uh, replacement for Roger Hurd, who was first scheduled to fight. What's the reason behind uh, Ware in place of Hurd? Okay, Roger Hurd got hurt. He uh, tore some ligaments in his elbow while training two weeks ago. And this fight was scheduled in Boston for November 15th, so he just took that fight, brought it to Ottawa. And whatever happens, if both fighters want a rematch, they'll get a rematch in Boston on November 15th. So I think that uh, 
We'll see how it's going to go for rematches. Okay, Ron the Bomb bringing both fighters to the center of the ring. Going over a few of the basic rules that he would like them to follow. On your right is Jean Yves Terriot. And in that red corner, Doug Ware, the bell sounds. Round one underway. John? That's right. And that's Jean Yves Terriot's power. Seconds. Will he come back with it again? It certainly looks as though he had wear. Put Terio away. Is looking good. Another round kick to the face by Tidio. Oh, I thought this fight was all over the second time that wear went down. Oh, he is so groggy. Oh, Tidio wants this fight this real fight. bad. They should throw in the towel. The, the kid has been hurt. If it was my boy, I would throw in the towel. Terrio all over where here in the opening round. Solo left Good. one again yeah, by Terrio. Didn't land properly. Well, I'm surprised. That, I'm surprised, John, that Terrio has not. There it is. I was looking kick. for that kick. It's it's got to be in. It's all over. I think it's all over. The fight. He is stopping the fight. Well, Ron the Bomb. It's all over. Four knockdown in the first round. Johnny Thiel will find Bill Superfoot Wallace April 26th, the Ottawa Civic Center. The world champions coming to Ottawa. Who? John, a tremendous bout here. A great fight. It was over in just a matter of minutes, uh, seconds, in this first round of the main event. Jean Yves Terrio defeating Doug Ware. I Jean, think, your final comments. I think what happened here is that Jean Yves stunned him and right in the opening round with a left hook. Now, we don't know if Doug Ware is that good or how good he is, he is but we'll know in Boston if he wants to rematch. He was stunned right away, then that powerful kick that came in. Knocked him down, and I think the fight should have been stopped over there. And then a final kick with a punch combination to follow did the job, and it's going home with the champ and bring on Bill Wallace. John Teddy, and thank you very much for uh, having us here at the uh, Shadow. It was a pleasure. I hope our viewers enjoyed every minute of uh, professional kickboxing. I hope so too. Well, it'd be nice if we can get John just over here right now. John, okay, let's see if we can pick up things here. Uh, we want to congratulate you on just a tremendous boat. You really came out. Was that your plan to come out as fast as you did? Well, uh, for the past uh, couple of fights, my manager and my trainer told me to try to start a little bit sooner because uh, uh, one of my fights I almost lost because I took about three rounds to start. And uh, my manager told me, you know, try and go out there and start throwing some real good stuff and uh, it's paying off. John, are you going to give him a rematch in Boston? Well, if he wants to... If she wants to get hurt again, uh, what can I say? <laughs> Sorry, listen, with all of this uh, training that you went through for this particular fight, it must be great to finish it in the early stages of that opening round. Yeah, well, I was training for a light heavyweight fellow, and uh, uh, I was getting ready real, real hard. I was getting ready to punch, you know, and kick hard, and uh, unfortunately, uh, that fellow couldn't make it, and we had a replacement uh, three or four weeks ago, so uh, everything is coming together real good. Okay, real listen, good. we'll let you go. I know you're uh, sweating here like crazy. You put up a great fight. Thanks very much. Congratulations again. Thank you very much.